Hi everyone and welcome back to another one of our instructional build videos. On today's build video, we are going to show you how to assemble your C-beam gantry actuator. So this is lead screw driven, utilizing our mini extreme wheels on the inside of the C-beam tracks. It's a rigid platform and a really nice design. This design also gives you options of mounting to the C-beam on the sides. Since we're utilizing the mini extreme wheels on the inside of the tracks, this opens up possibilities on the side for different mounting configurations. It's a really nice modification to add to your builds. So let's go ahead and get started. So to start this off, we're going to go ahead and assemble our wheels. In each kit, you should see two mini V bearings, two mini V precision shims, one nylon hex nut, and of course, your mini wheel shell. In order to assemble this, you simply take a bearing in the front face, pop it into place, turn it around, add your mini V precision shim, close it in with your additional bearing, and that's the wheel assembly. These two additional parts will be left off to the side for our additional steps. So go ahead and assemble your additional three wheels and we'll move on to the next step. On this next step we are going to assemble our C-beam gantry plate with our wheels. We need to go ahead and gather these parts. Four 25 millimeter screws, four mini V extreme wheels, two 6 millimeter aluminum spacers, two 6 millimeter eccentric spacers, four mini V precision shims, six nylon hex nuts, two 3 millimeter aluminum spacers, our anti backlash nut block, two 20 millimeter screws. Our tooling that we're going to use for this step is our M5 ball driver and spanner wrench. So to start off with this assembly, first I want to take a look at our anti backlash nut block. As you can see, I have my grub screw connected to the anti backlash nut block. What I do usually is I thread the screw in until it touches the delrin on the back. You don't need to torque it any more than that. So to add this, it's just a simple precaution over time if this were to wear, you can tighten this grub screw to prevent any additional backlash, which is a really nice feature for this block. So go ahead and add that grub screw, just touch the delrin and tie on your thin hex nut and that will complete the assembly for the nut block. Now for the plate, you'll see that we have two large holes here which accompany our eccentric spacers and then two smaller holes here for our fixed side of wheels which will be the aluminum spacers that will be inserted on the back end. So what we'll do is go ahead and insert our 25 millimeter screws through each one of these holes. From there, I'm going to rotate the plate to its back and we'll start our stacking configuration for this plate. So starting with the fixed side first, which is this first set of screws, we'll go ahead and put on two 6 millimeter aluminum spacers and then next we'll use our mini V precision shims on top and then add your mini V wheels on top of the precision shims. From there, we'll take our nylon hex nuts and put them right on top. So for the top portion, which is our eccentric side, let's go ahead and take a look at our eccentric. As you can see, we have a six millimeter stamp here, which indicates our fully open position for the eccentric. Since we have an off-center hole here on the eccentric, the reason it's designed like this is to add strength to your wheels. So we call that term preload. The preload adjusts the tightness to the rail prevent your gantry system from moving around. So we want a nice lock to the rail system. These eccentrics allow that to happen. So for these eccentrics, make sure that the six millimeter stamp side is facing inward towards these wheels. If this were to ride on the outside of the rail, we would leave these at a fully open position, which would be away from the fixed wheels. But since this plate's gonna ride inside the track of the C-beam, we need to face the stamped end towards our fixed wheels. From there we'll add our mini V precision shims and then our mini V extreme wheels. Then we'll tie on a couple of these nylon hex nuts and let's go ahead and tighten this system down. So once you have those tightened down, 
Take a look at your centrics, make sure that the 6mm stamp is facing towards your fixed wheels. If it's not, go ahead and make that adjustment to where it is. And this is really important because the wheels will not fit inside the track otherwise. So you really want to make sure that you face those towards the fixed wheels. So that looks good. Let's move on to the anti-backlash nut block. So on the outer holes here, of the center of our plate, we're going to insert our two M5 20mm screws. From there, we'll go ahead and add our 3mm aluminum spacers and then our anti backlash nut block, making sure that the hexed recessed side is facing you and that's where your nylon hex nuts are going to go. So, what I do is I just place those into the nut block and from the back end, I'm going to tighten it down. Now something to pay attention to is you want to make sure that this anti-backlash nut block is mounted straight. An easy way to do that is to loosen these screws and once you mount your lead screw inside of the nut block you can tighten these back down. So we're going to go ahead and loosen these slightly. You'll see I have a little movement here and that way our lead screw can seat properly into the nut block. So now that that assembly is complete, let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So on this next step, we need to go ahead and adjust our centrics. So in order to do so, we just need a spanner wrench and our 250mm C-beam. This plate will ride in the middle of the track, so paying attention to where your centrics and your fixed wheels are placed. It should slide right into the C-beam, because we made that adjustment to our centrics. But you'll see that this plate is extremely loose. So we can't have that. This this actuator is built for precision. We cannot have any looseness in the plate. So taking the plate back out, we're going to go ahead and make some adjustments to our centrics. So on this, on this side of the plate is where our centrics are. Let's go ahead and adjust these in the same direction. So I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. And this is just starting off. It's a good place to start. It's the same for this back eccentric. So now that I've adjusted those, I'm going to go ahead and test the preload. And once again, the preload is how tight these wheels fit to the rail. And I'm already noticing some rigidity here. That actually feels really nice. So I can't move that plate at all. It's actually a really tight lock, which is exactly what we want. Another way to test that is to test the friction of the wheels against the rail. So just using an index finger, you just want to make sure you have some movement here. It's actually a little tight. As you can see as I'm trying to move this wheel, it's moving the gantry. If you test the opposite wheel, it's the same, it's the same thing. So you want to go ahead and adjust those. So 90 degrees was too much. So where my six millimeter stamp is, I'm gonna go back towards my fixed wheel just slightly. And the same for the other side. Let's try that. So once again, test the friction of the wheels. So that's still a little tight. You really want the perfect amount of preload. It can be frustrating at times, but just be patient and make sure you get this lock right. Because you don't want to add additional pressure to the wheels because it will cause wear over time. Okay, so that's the perfect preload right there. If you look closely, as I touch this wheel, I'm able to turn it, but you still feel some friction on the rail. So there's a little resistance, which is exactly what we want. And that's the same for the other side. You can check these, these wheels as well. So that's perfect. And also you can see when you lay your C-beam flat, that gantry plate is not coming up. It's actually trying to lift the C-beam up. That is a tight lock and that's perfect. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. So in this next step, we're going to go ahead and finish our assembly. So let's go ahead and gather these parts. We'll need our lead screw, two C-beam end mounts, two 40 millimeter aluminum spacers, eight 20 millimeter screws, two lock collars, two bearings, two 8 millimeter shims, 
flexible coupling, NEMA 23 motor, and our trusty ball driver set. So let's go ahead and get started. First by taking our C-beam end mounts, taking notice to the plate itself, you'll see that you have a recessed hole on one side. This is to accompany our bearing, which will fit flush into the side of the C-beam end mount. So make sure that this is facing the inside of the C-beam, just like so. And we'll use the 20 millimeter screws to mount this into place. And as you can see, all the screws are flush onto the C-beam end mount. And that is really nice for the assembly. It looks great. Alright, so let's go ahead and move on to the opposite side. Once again, taking the C-beam end mount, with the recessed hole facing inward. Let's go ahead and mount that into place. So now that we have our C-beam end mounts attached to our C-beam, let's go ahead and feed our lead screw through this system. We need to add additional parts to the front before we attach to our anti-backlash nut block. So starting with our 8mm bearing, then our 8mm shim, and lock collar last. Keeping these parts down at this end, this is going to hold our lead screw into place attached to our C-beam end mount, then the opposite side is going to receive the same parts and is going to mount to the opposite end. So let's feed our lead screw through the anti-backlash nut block. Once meeting the anti-backlash nut block, you simply rotate to the right with the lead screw and it will feed through the threads of the block. So once you see the lead screw protruding through, you're going to add those additional parts. From there, you'll see that the lead screw is flush with our C-beam end mount. That's exactly what you want. The top portion should have an additional length of the lead screw hanging out. And this is where our flexible coupling and motor is going to come into place. So let's go ahead and lock our lock collars into place. Making sure that the system is tight against the bearing, we're going to go ahead and screw the lock collar into place. Same on the opposite end. Now test the lead screw for any movement. If you see that your lock collar is moving back and forth, you need to reevaluate the system and make sure that it's tight. But as you can see with mine, there's no movement. So this is a nice sturdy system. That looks great. So let's go ahead and move on to the flexible coupling. You'll see that one side is larger than the other. The quarter inch bore is for our NEMA 23 motor. The 8mm side is going to attach to our lead screw. So placing this on top of the lead screw, you want to make sure to leave room in between the C-beam end mount and your flexible coupling to avoid any rubbing. So that looks good. From there, screw down the set screw on the opposite end of the flexible coupling. Rotate it around and tighten down this additional screw. So now, let's move on to the motor. Mounting this into place, you'll see that the C-beam end mount has two threaded holes here at the bottom for our M5 50mm screws. So with the motor, I like to face my wires hanging down. So if this were to be a Z-axis, my wires would be hanging towards the back of the machine. And that's just easier for wire management. So that's exactly how I'm going to mount it. Taking the screws, I'm going to run it through each hole on the motor. And then I'm going to add 40 millimeter aluminum spacer to each screw. 
Allowing the motor to slide into the flexible coupling, I'm going to align each screw to the C-beam end mount and tighten the system down. Make sure that the system is tight, so check each screw for any type of play. You want to make sure that this is rigid and the motor is not going to turn. So that looks really good. From there, let's rotate our flexible coupling to meet the flat part of the shaft on the motor. You'll see this flat portion of the shaft. This is where we want to mount the set screw. So now that I'm aligned with the flat part of the shaft on the motor, I'm going to tighten down the set screw. Now rotating this coupling once more, I'm going to tighten down the screw. So the last thing we need to do is go ahead and tighten down this anti-backlash nut block. So take your ball driver and make sure to tighten down both these screws. Once that's finished, your assembly is complete. So thanks for watching guys. Make sure to stay tuned for future builds, so subscribe to the channel, hit that like button, and good luck on all your future builds.